The ideal gas law can be written as follows. PV equals nRT. And R is always the same number. It's referred to as the gas constant, and it has the value of 0 0.0821. And it has four units attached to it because the pressure, the volume, the N, which is number of moles, and the T, those units have to be consistent with this constant. So in order to solve for this, we can only have uh, one unknown value. So the problem would have to give us three out of these four unknowns. R is always known. It's this constant. So I'm just going to list what these are. P is the pressure, and the pressure has to be in atmospheres. V is the volume, and the volume has to be in liters. And T is the temperature, and the temperature always has to be in degrees Kelvin. And then this is the new way that we solve for moles. So N is always equal to moles of a gas. So, for example, if we want to solve for moles of a gas, I'm going to give us just a quick problem here. Uh, if we had a balloon and we knew its volume and we knew the pressure and we knew the temperature, then we could solve for N. And we do that by rearranging the equation. So if we have PV equals NRT, we would divide both sides by RT, and that would leave us with N. N is equal to PV divided by RT. Okay. And so I'm going to give us an example problem, and we'll see that we've got to convert all of our units and then solve for N. Okay. So I'm just going to give us a quick example. Calculate the moles. of a gas, and it does not matter what the gas is, uh, in a, we'll say a 3.5 liter container uh, at 100 and, or 1,665 millimeters of mercury and 21 degrees Celsius. And so this is our V. V is 3.5 liters. That's already in the correct unit. Our pressure is in millimeters of mercury. So from the previous slide, we saw that to convert millimeters of mercury to atmospheres, we divide by 760. So this is the distance the mercury column rises, and we define that um, sea level pressure as one atmosphere. So to get that in the correct units, we divide. And so our pressure would be 2.19 atmospheres. So before we plug any values into the equation to solve for moles, we have to make sure that volume, pressure, and temperature are all in the correct units. So in order to change from degrees Celsius to Kelvin, we add 273. So this gives us 294 degrees Kelvin. <clears throat> and since this says to calculate the moles, we need to solve for N. So we're going to write the ideal gas law. PV divided by RT allows us to calculate for N, and we plug in these units. So pressure is 2.19 atmospheres. Volume was 3.5 liters. R is that constant, 0 0.0821, and it has all four units here. A liter times an atmosphere per mole per degree Kelvin. And then we're also going to have the temperature, T, in the denominator. And our temperature is 294 degrees Kelvin. And the units are all going to cancel. That atmosphere cancels the liters cancel, and the degrees Kelvin cancel. The only unit left is 
the mole, and it's in the denominator of a denominator, so that actually turns into a numerator. And the best way to plug this in the calculator is 2.19 times 3.5 divide by 0 0.0821. And we want to remember to divide by that 294 because that number is in the denominator. So if we do that, we're going to get 0.317. We'll round that value to three significant figures. So we'll call that 0.318. So n is equal to 0.318, and the unit on n would be moles. So that is the most common way we're going to use the ideal gas law. And since it's very easy to know a pressure from a pressure gauge, and the temperature of the room, and the volume of the container, we can always rearrange the gas law in this fashion and solve for how many moles of a gas there are.